Hi guys, today we're going to look at the reactions that benzene takes part in, okay? The first thing that we need to know is the name of the mechanism that it undergoes. So the name of the mechanism here is electrophilic substitution, okay? We've all covered these words over here. So electrophilic means that an electrophile is involved. Um, electrophile being something that will accept a pair of electrons. Okay, so it is usually um, either positively charged, um, so it can accept um, a pair of electrons. Substitution reaction, so that means that we're going to have two reactants and we're going to have two products at the end. Okay, so the general equation for this that we're going to look at is we are going to react benzene with an electrophile. Okay, so the electrophile, I'm representing that with E and a plus sign over here. So it's got a positive charge. And then when we do our substitution reaction, it should form a benzene ring where we've got the electrophile that has replaced or substituted um, a hydrogen on that ring. So plus H plus over here. Okay, so that electrophile has come in. Somehow it's kicked out that hydrogen on there. So two reactants and we're ending up with two products over here. OK, so that's the overall kind of general equation of what we're going to do today. Right, so the first type of reaction that we need to look at is the reaction where we do the nitration of benzene. And in this reaction, we are going to form this molecule over here, which is called nitrobenzene. And we're going to make that from benzene. So in terms of the overall reaction, starting off with benzene, we need to react that with concentrated nitric acid. And it's very important that it is concentrated nitric acid. And we are going to form our nitrobenzene and we are going to form a H2O molecule as well. Okay. Now in this process, we need to have as our catalyst, I'm going to write this one on the arrow. We also need to have concentrated sulfuric acid, and this should be done at around 50 degrees Celsius. Okay. Right. So in terms of the mechanism for this, um, when we've done mechanisms so far, we've looked at curly arrow reactions. This one will have a curly arrow reaction, so a mechanism where we use curly arrows. But we need to start off by looking at how our electrophile is generated. Okay, If we look at our nitric acid, that itself is not the electrophile. We need to generate the electrophile from our nitric acid, and that's where our catalyst comes into play. OK, so in this mechanism, we actually have three steps and we're going to start off by looking at step one. And step one is where we generate the electrophile. Because remember, an electrophile has to be usually positively charged because it wants to accept a pair of electrons. So when we react our concentrated nitric acid with our concentrated sulfuric acid, what we form is our electrophile, which is this species over here. OK, and this one is called the nitronium ion. And as you can see, it's got a positive charge, so therefore it's going to act as a very good nucleophile. In this process as well, we are going to form HSO4 minus and we're going to form a water molecule as well. OK, so now we have generated our electrophile. We're now ready for our benzene ring to react with it. So now we can move on to step two. So step two is where the substitution occurs. So we have our benzene ring. We have our electrophile, so NO2+, plus, our nitronium ion. And now, if you remember, that ring in the middle is representing six delocalized electrons. Okay, So for a while, we are going to disrupt that 
delocalized structure in the middle. So given that we've got six delocalized electrons, it's electron rich here, it's electron poor over here. So we're going to have our curly arrow showing a movement of a pair of electrons from that delocalized ring. So two of them are going to react or they're going to move towards the NO2. OK, so our curly arrow should always start from that delocalized ring going to our electrophile. OK, and then let's have a look at the intermediate that forms in that step. So we've now disrupted that delocalized ring. So there's not six electrons in the middle, given that two have gone towards the um, electrophile. There are only four electrons remaining over here. So we show that disrupted delocalized system by this sort of horseshoe shape over here. Now your horseshoe shape must cover five of the carbons in that ring. OK. And given that we've lost electrons, we are positively charged over here. So you put a positive charge in that horseshoe that you draw over here. OK, bearing in mind, you had a hydrogen over here. You have a hydrogen on each carbon where well, you still have a hydrogen over here. And now we have formed a bond when that um, electron pair went to the NO2. We formed a bond from that carbon to the NO2. OK. So this is our intermediate that forms. It's very unstable. So very quickly, it wants to go back to what it was before. It wants to go back to that delocalized structure. OK, so in order to get that delocalized structure back, because we lost two electrons, we need to gain two electrons from somewhere to get that six electron um, over that over all of those p orbitals. We're going to get the electrons from the bond between the hydrogen and the carbon. OK, so the electrons here are going to be donated back into the ring and that's going to restore that delocalized structure. Given that hydrogen has lost its electrons, we should be left behind with a H plus. So therefore our product, the NO2 there, and we've also released a H plus. Okay, so that's step two. We formed our nitrobenzene. We've also formed a H plus. And now let's have a look at what we can do to get our catalyst back. Because remember, a catalyst is something that we use um, to speed up chemical reaction, but it can't be used up overall. OK, so step three is our um, catalyst regeneration. So we've got to regenerate our catalyst. And if you remember, our catalyst was sulfuric acid. In step one, one of the species that we made was HSO4 minus. And in step two, we released a H plus ion. So now to regenerate the catalyst, those two will combine to give our sulfuric acid again. OK, so overall, we have made our nitrobenzene. Step one, we also made water. And then we've also regenerated that catalyst in step three. Also, bear in mind, if this reaction is not done at 50 degrees Celsius, if it's done above 50 degrees Celsius, what can actually happen is that nitrobenzene that forms can undergo another substitution. OK, so by that, I mean it can then substitute again and it can keep going um, if it's done at a high temperature. So in order to control how many times the substitution occurs, we control the temperature. So it should be done at 50 degrees Celsius to ensure mono substitution, not um, disubstitution or tri-substitution.